since I start, or since I bought some Beyblade this week, let's start off with the first inside the box request, which was Beyblade. And I, um, I'm just showing the two Beyblade Metal Fusion volumes I have because I haven't had enough time to look up what the other ones are and which volume numbers they are. Uh, next up, I was asked to show my Gotcha Man DVDs. Naturally, I don't have all of them. If you all remember seeing me purchase a handful. So I've got volumes 1, 2, 3, 4, and I also have volume 10. So I've still got a good number of those to get, and some of them, they get kind of pricey, I think. Maybe not as expensive as Pokemon DVD um, 47, but um, next series, uh, Blade of the Immortal. Ah, yes. These are definitely worthwhile to open up and look into because they have completely different art on the plastic DVD on the inside. So that's disc one. We have disc two. And finally, disc three. And that finally is actually the biggest problem with this. It basically, I don't think it really had focus. I hear that the manga was really well known. So I'm guessing it. this is all they were able to come out with, I guess. Next up, we've got a, a series that is very commonly requested. But it's one of those really well known series, so it's no surprise. We've got Bleach. Those are the five white DVDs, which may be our season one. I don't know. Then we've got the red DVDs. So I bought the individuals of these. But Fizz has discontinued individuals. So I'm going to have to start purchasing the season box sets. Which is unfortunate. Here are the dark blue ones. Yeah, uh, what I have to figure out, I mean, I'm definitely going to switch to the season box sets because that's what's going to be coming out. But the next upcoming season box sets, and these are light blue, the next season box sets have like, the, f the first two episodes on it are the last two episodes on the DVD I bought last. Maybe that's not too much of a problem, but I just have to make a decision. And 22. But that is not all. Uh, the next four are black. That's 23. 24. 25. As you can tell, this pile is getting kind of tall. I think if we turn it sideways like this, though, you can see some of the colors involved. And there's probably enough room for me to keep going without cutting the video, which adds time. 28. And the DVDs get really thin as they get more modern. I think as they try and um, save us as much money as they can. These, of course, are white on the side. And then, uh, last but not least, the final individual release, which is the only remaining black one. Then uh, we can uh, look at the movies. Movie one here has a plastic case over it. Some pretty cool art on the inside. No need to dig much deeper than that, I think. Oh, great. And one thing I should make sure I do is not put it, these plastic cases on upside down. And then we have movie two. I still haven't seen this yet. I have to figure out, or I have to double check to see uh, what episode I'm trying to get to before I let myself watch this. I basically try and time it so that I watch 
the movie in between the episodes that would have been on air in Japan at the time. Now here's an important series, at least important to me. I think a lot of people consider it to be important for the anime industry in general, but I'll have to admit, I only hear people make those suggestions, and I guess I like them because to me, they really did have that big of an effect on me. This is pretty much what turned me on to becoming obsessive about anime, and what turned me on to collecting DVDs. These are the first, um, the, I think the original 8 DVD release, and of course, next to those I have uh, the Death and Rebirth movie and the End of Evangelion movie. But, as I've mentioned, I'm an Evangelion fan, so I also have box set version of the Platinum Edition. At the time the Platinum Edition came out, was coming out, I didn't quite have the disposable income I do now, so it's only natural that I didn't pick this up until it came out on thin DVD box set. And I guess if I were to get people to rewatch the series, it would probably be with this. But I can't get rid of those old ones because that's real memories there. And now this is more modern and relevant. Evangelion 1.01. It doesn't say anything about special edition or anything on it. There's nothing particularly special about this other than that's a neat little insert. And kind of related to even give actually completely related to it. I also have a copy of even going 1.11. This one's a lot shinier. And I really love this. It's it's a great take on Evangelion, in my opinion. And I can't wait to see Evangelion 2.22, which comes out um, uh, in April, I guess. Ah, Samurai Champloo. Let's uh, push this back to give me a little more space. So this is the box set. This thing never seemed to go down in price. Probably because it's a pretty... Highly amusing series. Let's see. Highly amusing, not only in its execution, but in its setup, so to speak. Um, not much of a conclusion to whatever resemblance of a story there was, I guess. So in that regard, it, it's not like a fulfilling thing to finish, I think. But it was definitely fulfilling to watch. Another big series. There are a good number of big series requested this week. A couple of those being ones that can be covered quickly. But ran my half, not as quick, since uh, there's uh, seven thin DVD box sets. The original Ranma DVDs and box sets came out before I was in the spending mood. So the thin DVD box sets, of course, is my way of catching up to owning them. Catching up to watching them is something else entirely. I need some sort of time-pausing watch. That's not going to help much if I spend all the pause time playing Minecraft, though. As for the content of the series itself, that first season is definitely awesome. Something about the second and the third season started being not as entertaining to watch. I could probably do it now that I can um, like play Minecraft at the same time I'm watching certain kinds of anime. Since this stuff is all dubbed, I think. I assume it's dubbed the entire way. That pretty much means I could um, get away with watching this. Uh, but there's so many other things to watch. Um, I'm not going to give a final opinion on it until I get around to watching all of it. Because the truth of the matter is it's very possible for things like this to kind of work in waves. Where the first season is super awesome. 
And even if none of the se other seasons are as good as, as it, they could still be pretty good. But, you know, they might get a little worse at first and then start getting better as they come up with new ideas and realize they're being um, uninnovative or something. I don't know for certain. This is all speculative. It's one reason I like to give a lot of anime a chance. I'd say something about anime having a good ending, but let's face it. This is a Rumiko Takahashi anime. It's not like she uh, makes good endings, I guess. In fact, I'd like to say that... Well, okay. I, I, I'm pretty sure there's some stuff she's ended. But... I guess what I mean by good ending is the kind of ending that is so awesome, spectacular, that it makes you glad you watched every single one of the episodes. I don't, I don't quite think she does that exactly. She can probably end them on a good note where you feel worthwhile having watched the entire series through. Maybe some people will feel um, like watching it and skipping it all the way through would be sufficient. I don't know. This, of course, is a movie box set. I don't know if that's an official cell or just a replica or what, but that might be something cell-like. And this has movies one and two. Well, last but not least, the OVA box set has two discs here. Yeah, just two discs. And what feels like a bunch of postcards. Oh, but we've got a lot of time, or a lot of stuff to still go through, so we'll end Iranma there. So, I'm not exactly sure what is off about this series, because I remember it being pretty good, but something about it makes me not care to rewatch it. I'm tempted to say some vague memories of the second half or something, but I don't know. It can be so hard to remember sometimes what exactly I thought about an anime that I I don't think it's necessarily worthwhile to say that just because I've watched 700, I'm like some sort of super anime expert, which a lot of people like to think. I was asked to show the Alien 9 Ultimate Collection, which I have. The thing that's nice about the Ultimate Collection is it has the original Alien 9 DVD, which has, of course, the only four episodes that were animated, but that doesn't have all of the content. But they were nice enough to have a box set with the three manga volumes in it. And you, you might notice from my, my anime list um, profile that this is pretty much the only thing that I've um, put on there is read. It's possible I also read the Love Hina manga, but I downloaded that long ago like long long ago like back in 2000 so 10 11 years ago probably closer to 10 years right now so without knowing exactly what i watched i don't want to um prematurely say what exactly i've read there i'll probably eventually read it again just so that i can settle that debate this is gunbuster uh, an old um, DVD by, uh, or an old series by Gynex. It's, this series is pretty enjoyable. I had a little trouble watching it the first time, but the second time through I had a lot more luck, which is a good thing too, because Watching this is pretty much a necessary, I consider it a necessary prerequisite for being able to fully understand and enjoy Gunbuster 2 the first time you watch it through. And Gunbuster 2 was just spectacular. Definitely Gynax warming up for Gurren Lagann. A kind of difficult to obtain release related to that is the Gunbuster vs. Diebuster movie pack, which... Um, it's really easy to get on Blu-ray, or at least it was. But getting it on DVD, that was a bit tricky. There's some inserts here, but uh, otherwise, there's 
movie versions of Gunbusters 1 and 2. So the movie version of Gunbuster 1 I thought was mostly nice. A couple of things I would, would have preferred differently, but overall, I really like how it puts certain events in the anime closer together. Um, really it increased the impact, I thought. Unfortunately, somebody asked me to show the Tsubasa Chronicles memories in OVA, but I said I would do that without really thinking too carefully what that meant, or rather researching carefully what that meant. This is a nice box set. Basically, the Memories and OVA collection was a, um, I did buy it, but I also gave it away because it said it had an OVA on it without saying what that OVA was, so I bought it on in the off chance that it was an OVA I didn't have, but it just was the movie, um, the XXX Holic, oh wait, it's just pronounced Holic. The Holic Tsubasa Chronicle crossover movie. So, I didn't need it, gave it away to a friend in need. So, the best I can do is show these individuals, which fortunately was requested by somebody. But if you still wanted to know what was in the Tsubasa Chronicles memory DVD, well, me telling you about it should be helpful. If you wanted to see what it looked like, I'm sorry about that. I should have thought a little bit more clearly. Unless you were the one who then subsequently asked me to show this stuff. Uh, looks like in my collection I put the OVA, which I still haven't watched, or the OVA collection, next to the series, so that the movie, which is a double feature, Again, Tsubasa Chronicle with Holic. There's a subtle crossover between the two of them because they take place in the same universe. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, let's see. Anyways, moving on to the next series, I was asked to show Rurouni Kenshin. I, of course, have the season collections, and there's not really much else to show, I guess. Well, the DVDs do have some good artwork on them. Not, like... The super spectacular thing in the world, but we can take a peek. I th it's I get the impression that a lot of people actually liked the story build up or the story built up in the second season, and I find it interesting that I actually preferred the smaller stories that were in the first and third season. Then again, I've, I've always thought that I, I have some pretty oddball um, anime preferences. Strange things that I think are not conventional. After the third season, there's these uh, two OVAs. I don't know that they take place after season and actually I think there's three OVAs Trust and Betrayal I think are two of them that are normally put together and then there's the Samurai X Reflection. Samurai X of course is the same series as Rurouni Kenshin just uh, given a different name because I think two companies ended up uh, with distribution rights so one released under Samurai X and the other under Rurouni Kenshin and this is just the motion picture which I still need to watch but even though this pile has gotten tall, let's try and fit one more thing into it. That would be, uh, I was asked to show Street Fighter 2 stuff. So this is Street Fighter 2, the animated movie. This is a two-disc special edition that has uh, Street Fighter Alpha and Street Fighter Alpha Generations. So even though it doesn't have the two... It is Street Fighter 2, I think, because I think that's where most of these characters came from. I don't really know. I really ought to do some research on what the very first Street Fighter was like. Because if you're like me, then you remember Street Fighter 2 on or something like that. Ah, Street Fighter 2 V. Excuse me. So... I only watched part of the first DVD in this, 
And I have to say, it was amusing just how, uh, I don't know, ambiguously gay duo Ken and Ryu were. But I had to watch more of it because I don't remember much about it. Actually, oh my, the Oh My Goddess stuff is not all that um, tall. So I probably could have included the Street Fighter 2 in this stuff. Oh well. These are the original Oh My Goddess OVA. The shiny version of the Oh My Goddess movie. I assume it's the shiny version. And the inside is, is blank, which I assume is natural. This one was actually a gift from a friend. But I did download it ahead of time, and I'm really glad I have that one on DVD, because I like it. I also like The Adventures of Mini Goddess, just because it has a simple, silly approach to looking at the series. This box set, of course, comes with the four individuals. At least I think they were four individuals. You know, I should probably look this stuff up ahead of time before... Talking about it on the camera. I make so many mistakes. You can almost make a game out of spot all the mistaken things that Emmett says. Oh, wait. Y'all know me as Giga Frosty. Oh, well, it doesn't really matter. Uh, this, of course, is the closer to recent Ah oh My Goddess TV series. I would say recent, except I don't know how much time has passed since these things came out. I was downloading them as they came out back then, so it could be five years old by now. And, uh, sometimes I just forget how old five years is. I could be mistaken, though. Not all of it is that old, I think. Huh. Last but not least, I was asked to show One Piece. And I don't think I've actually shown or had this requested time soon and this is a pretty good release uncut new dub and I actually find this dub to be pretty respectable I could maybe talk about it sometime in the future except I have not yet made any one of my review videos even though I was like so far into a Silent Hill Shattered Memories review it's too bad <sighs> Was there also an issue where we don't know if Funimation's going to continue releasing these after Season 3? Which would be quite unfortunate. We've got a DVD on the side here where my friend is. So we have to preserve that so that we know which DVD he's on. I mean, sure. Going into the beginning of Season 3... It was interesting and neat, but something felt a bit off. I don't know if it was that it was feeling repetitive or what, but eventually, you know, as it progressed, it started getting really awesome and epic and cool and stuff. I'd even say stuff, except that I don't like giving away spoilers, unless it's in a video that I intentionally set up to be a spoiler. And despite my desires, I've probably still spoiled um, stuff here and there. And a part of me hopes that y'all would let me know what kind of stuff I keep accidentally saying if I do keep saying it. Because otherwise, how am I going to learn? Uh, I think it's a bit tiring moving around for half an hour, constantly shuffling DVDs around. But, uh, well, I'd like to say it's worth it, but I don't know. I don't think I'm doing it because I consider it worth it. I'm doing it because I, well, Kind of conform, I guess. It looks like these are 
they just say Luffy Pirates on the inside. So we can probably just stick with the stuff on the outside. That's how far it's been released. I think the next part's released next week. And then we have uh, this movie, which is the Desert Pirate. The Desert Princess and the Pirates, which is basically a movie version of a part of the series. And I still haven't watched it, so I can't really say much else about it. Well, that's inside the box this week.